famous uh, moon pie. That was, uh, that was the name the Hare Krishnas gave me when I joined the temple. I grew up in the little lands of Mexico. Uh, I was a farmer. This one time, my uncle found the chupacabras and I beat him with a stick. That's when I found my love for drumming. It was a good story though. Uh, after that, I had to uh, cross over. I lost my brother that time. That's when I wrote my first song. I still miss you a lot. Then after that, I came here to Canada because they told me it was a land of opportunity. And it kind of was, but at first everybody thought I was crazy. Well, I want to thank you for being here today. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Like, I'm the best fucking musician ever, but uh, yeah, man, life has been pretty, life's been pretty hard until this point, you know? Like, I grew up in a life where everybody told me I was insane, I was crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know where they got that from, but... Uh, <laughs> so, Carl, can you, uh, first of all, just state uh, who you are, what do you, uh, who do you work for? I manage Mr. Flower's band, and I make sure he's happy. Okay, cool. And what are your thoughts on Mon as, a, as an artist? He's eccentric, always bouncing off the walls with new ideas, more like how much he needs for his piece to be perfect. He will not leave you alone until he gets that right beat for that right bit of production value. He just will not let you go. And how, uh, well, first of all, actually, because uh, we've done a little bit of research and we, real, we didn't really find much information about your company. Is it, what is it called again? OK Records. Okay, okay. and is it, would you say it's a successful uh, or company? OK Records is doing quite well. You could say we're doing OK. Mon Flowers made our records. The man, the moment he joined us, we started making shovelfuls of money. So, Connor, how did you find Mon? <sighs> Can't, I'll, ne I'll never forget that day. I was walking through the woods. It was just a normal day, listening to bird sounds. Just Trying to find some news, like thinking about what my next contract will be, how I'll like build my record company up more, create more revenue, right? Suddenly I hear this just one of a kind sound. I've never in my life imagined a sound this original. So I followed it. And I come across this dirty Mexican hobo. Uh, life was pretty hard for me back then. I used to be uh, addicted to inhaling markers, you know, like Sharpies and shit like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I've gone, I've gone pretty normal after that. You know, I clean myself. I found spiritualism. Now I feel like I'm a, I'm a better human being. vegetarian for seven years but these Canadian dogs man <laughs> they're pretty good <laughs> so who inspired you and how are you inspired by them <laughs> that's a pretty easy question actually you know I feel inspired every day because I see the I see the sun that I see directly into the sun and it just like give me messages and shit, and I do the same for the moon, and up there watching heaven I know like this one dude is always with me, Mr. Carlos Santana. Donde quieras que estés, hermano. What the hell? Carlos Santana is not dead yet. No way. I'm pretty sure he's been dead for quite some years now. <laughs> no way, dude. I was gonna marry a girl called Granite over there. But I married rock and roll instead. <laughs> How did you find this agency? What? No, man. 
I didn't found shit. Those guys found me. What are you talking about? Are you guys even professional here? I'm the next wonder king, man. Like, come on. What the fuck are you talking about here? I don't care how many orphans you have to stomp. I want their toothpicks tonight. Call you back. What are you doing here? Get the fuck away. Leave me alone. <laughs> What was your life before you got famous? Oh, life, it was pretty shitty for most of the time, but it was pretty good almost, you know? Like, uh, I had everything. I had, uh, I remember having enough money to get uh, fresh water every day. Ooh. So, what are you fucking doing back there, man? You're trying to do an interview here. Are you professional? Like, get the fuck out of here. <coughs> like, get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm sorry, sir. I tell you, man, sometimes I try, to, I try to be a better human being, but it's not fucking possible with these douchebags around. Okay, can we continue now? Yeah? Okay. Oh, hey guys, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my crib. This is where the magic happens. Come in, guys, I'll show you around. This is a magic spot I call home. Yeah guys, welcome to my crib. So this is where all the magic happens. Yeah man, so this is where I write most of my shit. Uh, this is where the magic happens, you will say that. <laughs> uh, yeah man, something about like nature, all this space just gets my creative juices flowing, you know? I was just kind of a little on, on the edge of homelessness before I met Mon. I was almost, well, I was almost because of Mon a couple times, but he's got to be one of my like the best people I ever met. Really, you know, he's, he's really eccentric with like how he creates music. It's like on another level. I never imagined meeting someone so gifted at making chords, establishing a lyrical pattern. He's just might be the next uh, Kurt Cobain, hopefully. What's up guys? So this is a studio. This is where I record everything. I made my own studio at my place, as you can see. <laughs> uh, okay, Rakers wanted to give me a studio, but I really don't like going. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for Ramiro. Uh, that guy is always late. I don't know why I work with him. Well, he's my childhood friend, you know. Sometimes he's a good guy, but most of the times he's just a prick with me. He's always doing like these weird faces and uh... I don't know, man. He's always late. Always late. Like, he's not professional at all, you know? Are you guys even professional too? Like, you guys were late. What's going on here, man? What would you say about your band member? Yeah, the guy is pretty good most of the time, you know? Sometimes he messes up, he doesn't come to practice. He's pretty silent most of the time too, so I don't know what the fuck is going on through his head. But I know he's a good person and I'm always trying to teach him how to be better, so I think it works for both of us, yeah. Also, I don't know what the fuck he's saying half of the time, you know? He's just speaking some weird kind of Spanish that I don't understand. Like, I, I can speak pretty good Spanish, but that guy is just weird, you know? Oh, our secondary bassist. <laughs> pretty basic. <laughs> the guy doesn't, guy doesn't really know how to talk. He kind of speaks in bass. <laughs> like, get the guy in a room, try to have a conversation with 
it's kind of funny. Like, yeah, man. So I think I'm a pretty good friend, you know. Most of the times he screws up, but uh, I'm always there for him. I treat the guy pretty well, and uh, yeah, I think I'm actually an amazing friend, you know. Like, yeah, man. There was this one time where he like. What the fuck, man? What time is it? Where's the base? Ramiro, where's the fucking base? Donde está el puto bajo, Ramiro? No trajo el puto bajo. No mames. No mames. What the fuck, dude? No lo puedo creer. Let's go, guys. Let's do music coming along. Don't interrupt me, man. We're speaking Spanish right now. Uh, I, I'm the fucking manager here. How's oh. the music coming along? You shut up, bro. I'm speaking right now. Sit down. We're doing an interview. We're doing it properly, okay? No fuck ups. We're being professional now. Are you intimidated by Mon in any way? Me? Hell yes. Hell yes. I make sure that man is happy so I don't have to hear from him. Oh, it's just even talking to him, I know he's gonna fucking call me. Another thing about how his shoe is too tight on his pinky toe or his, his glasses are just a little off his face. He can't just put them back on. He has to have me fucking get him a new pair of glasses that balance just right on his nose. I mean, Oh, speaking of the devil. Hello, Mon. What the fuck do you mean? Your mom's not working for you today. Well, I can't replace your mother. You only have to bring the bass, man. Mami, Ramiro, solo tenías que traer el bajo, güey. Now you get to play the fucking throttle. OK Records used to have 36 artists signed on. 36. We were doing well, like an album a day. Like someone would produce an album every day. Now we only have Mon left. Mon is all OK Records has. We had to sell 99% of our assets to afford them. Presidente, could you like tape tell him that? I don't think he really understands English. He just like mocks it. Like, could you like? You're you're this wrangler. You're the guy that keeps him in line. Like, oh, fuck. could you say something like? So a lot of people are calling me a one-hit wonder right now. Nah, that's not happening, bro. I'm, I'm working on the next song, and then the next one, and then the next one. I tell you, man, I tell you, we're gonna fucking rock the world, man. That's the plan. The plan is to have every kid, every woman, every man, every dog, every fucking human being on this planet know who the fuck Mon Flowers is. And I think I'm going pretty close to that, so that's the, that's the goal right now, you know. And what do you think your future is gonna look like? The future? Oh, I'll just tell you one thing, man. The future of the music.
the whole music industry is going to look like this.